Hey folks, it's Andrew from Gemba Red. In one interview, Dr. Hamlin was asked what distance to use red light therapy panels. So how close do you want to stand or be near one of these devices? It doesn't have to be on your skin. I put it on my skin because I think it's more efficient. Mm -hmm. The LED is touching your skin. More of the light goes in rather than being diffusely reflected. The LED light is not focused. So if you stand in front of an LED panel, a surprising amount of the light is diffusely reflected off your skin. If you lie on the LED panel, much more of it goes in. So this response seems rather strange. Although he acknowledges using panels at a distance can work, he prefers to lay them right on the skin. And in another interview, he made the same point with more emphasis. You can lie on them, right? So a lot of people think, oh, I've got this big panel, I have to hang it on a door and stand in front of it. I said, just stick it flat on the bed and lie on it. Light sources in contact with the skin, a lot more light will go in. I, I just find it ridiculous that hanging your panel on the back of a door and standing in front of it. So there might be something very wrong with this industry if the world's leading expert is laughing at the way most of us use red light therapy panels and even calling it ridiculous. So what's going on with the stuff of laying panels on the skin or laying on your panels? Well, in this video, we're going to dive deep into the science of the skin contact method for red light therapy, one of the most important methods for clinical grade photobiomodulation to get the deepest penetration and get the most consistent results. So let's get started with the definition of the skin contact method. I think defining things is very important. And here's an article by Dr. Enwemeka that has a very good definition for skin contact mode. And here are the direct quotes. Treatment may be done with the applicator either in direct contact with the patient or at a distance away from the skin surface. The former is referred to as contact mode of treatment, while the latter is the non-contact mode of treatment. So it's really important to know that there are two main modes of applying red light therapy in the contact mode or the non-contact mode. And they go on with an even more important statement. Whenever possible, the contact mode of treatment is preferred for the simple reason that the loss of energy is minimal. Virtually every photon emitting from the applicator enters the patient's skin or tissue. This is not the case with the non-contact mode of treatment, in which some of the photons are reflected or refracted from the surface of the skin, resulting in loss of energy and diminishing the intended amount of treatment energy. So we're going to see this pattern where the researchers and experts and authors of various books and articles, they all prefer the skin contact mode for more efficient dosing. Now, the World Association for Photobiomodulation Therapy, the WALT, they published standards for the standardization of randomized control trials by first listing out all the parameters for a successful trial. So we see here first is the application procedure, skin contact at a distance or scanning mode. So there are three main modes according to them. Then, of course, they have wavelength, the output power or intensity, the treatment time, and the energy dose in joules or joules per centimeter squared. So I think most people understand if you want similar results as the clinical trials, you want to match the wavelength, you want to match the intensity, you want the same dose, and you want the same exposure time. But what a lot of people are missing is the application mode. Is it skin contact or non-contacted? What, what did the trial do? And we need to be able to mimic as close as possible the trial. So I think it's significant that they listed the application procedure first, because that's going to determine if you're using skin contact, you're getting deeper penetration, or if you're doing non-contact, you're doing more superficial and systemic treatments. Here's another excellent quote on the importance of the contact pressure technique. The pressure technique eliminates any power loss due to air gap and reflection from the stratum corneum, physically places the probe head nearer to the target tissue, and blanches out the superficial microvasculature, thereby removing a possible absorbing medium to give better penetration and thus deeper absorption of a more clinically viable photon density. So again, there are three main reasons why the skin contact technique is so important. It's the skin reflection losses that are significant. About 60% from Caucasian skin will reflect both red and near infrared wavelengths. So you already get a massive loss of absorption of those photons. They get reflected off. They're not helping with the therapy. 
And I find some people are starting to accept this. It's very easily observable. You can take selfies and see the reflection off your skin. It only feeds kind of this narrative that you can overcompensate. You can increase your intensity or your dose by 60% and offset the losses of reflection. But what a lot of people are still missing is the compression of the skin that physically compresses down the skin. So you get closer to your target tissue and you're pushing away the blood, which has a lot of water. And those are two competing chromophores. So you're changing the optics of the tissue to get that deeper penetration. And here's an excellent video that explains this and gives an excellent little pictorial of what's going on. For deep tissue, on-contact delivery techniques prove more effective. There are three primary therapeutic advantages related to on-contact delivery. These include tissue contact, which when properly implemented, minimizes light energy losses due to reflection at the air-skin surface interface. Second, tissue compression, which lessens absorption and scatter losses in the compressed tissues by shortening the distance the light must travel to reach the target tissue. And finally, blanching at the compressed tissues removes superficial blood from the area, minimizing incidental photonic loss from blood absorption. These factors attenuate photon penetration to deeper tissues. And here's another review article by some of the most prominent researchers in the industry, and they also make this important call out. When a light source is applied to the skin in contact mode, more light penetrates due to two reasons. A, compression of the tissue reduces optical interference by blood flow. B, diffuse reflectance by the skin is reduced. So again, maybe the order is important. We want to compress that tissue. We can't just overcompensate for the reflection losses. Another review article here also just casually says that they use the skin contact method to reduce reflection losses. And here's a handbook of low-level laser therapy by Dr. Hamblin, Dr. D'Souza, and Dr. Agarol. And they say contacting the skin with the probe head captures some of the reflected light, which is reflected back to the patient increasing dosage. With an increase in contact pressure, the probe may exsanguinate the superficial capillary bed, reducing reflection and remittance, which results in deeper light penetration. With exsanguinate being a fancy way of pushing the blood out of the way, so it's really important to get that deeper penetration with the, not just contact mode, but a little bit of pressure. So another laser therapy handbook by doctors Hode and Tune, and they show this diagram with very clearly the distance mode is not getting much penetration. If you just have some contact, you get much better penetration, and when you use the pressure technique, you get even more penetration. So now there's kind of three modes that we're talking about here. We have distance, we have some contact, and we have some firm pressure. And this is how they say it, with the fiber end held in contact with the skin, less reflection from the skin is achieved, and it is possible to make a mechanical pressure forcing the nearest blood away, which also increases light penetration. And here's an excellent video with Dr. Anita Saltmarsh, also talking about this exact same diagram. There are different ways of delivering energy. We can hover a light above the area we're treating and never make direct contact. But you'll see from this uh, diagram that you have much less depth of penetration. Or you can make direct contact and then you get greater depth of penetration. And if there's slight pressure put over the area, especially if you're talking about treating over a muscle, um, then you'll get greater depth of penetration of that light energy into the tissue. This is going to be important because devices may make direct contact when we're doing transcranial or other forms of treatment, or they may hover over the area. But keep in mind, when that's done, you're not getting the same depth of penetration and therefore generally effectiveness. So like what Dr. Saltmarsh just said, going back to this laser phototherapy handbook, if we're treating shallow problems like superficial tissue, then it's fine to be non-contact. But if you have deeper problems, then you use the pressure technique. And the book really emphasizes that three joules delivered in non-contact is a very different treatment than three joules with the pressure technique. So it gets very important. They don't talk about increasing the intensity to get more penetration because that's only a marginal improvement. They talk about for deep tissue, you need the pressure technique. And here's another video with a clinician using a class four laser describing he has different heads for different techniques. He's got one head for non-contact and one for the pressure technique. Now this is an example of a contactless probe, which means it doesn't actually touch your skin. 
This is the type of probe we would use over a more superficial injury, such as an open wound, a sprained ankle, or a sprained wrist. Here's an example of a probe that we very frequently use when we try to get deeper into the muscle tissues or into some of the deeper joints of the body, such as the spine. This allows us to deliver a dose of light even deeper because it compresses the tissues, allowing the light energy to get deeper into the body. And I thought it was interesting that I found even Niels Finson in his book over a hundred years ago, he was talking about how blood was getting in the way of penetration. So he came up with his own kind of skin contact device. So it's very easily observable that you need the skin contact to press out that blood to get out of the way to get the deeper penetration. And notice even a hundred years ago, he didn't say anything barbaric like cranking up the intensity. He found a very elegant solution to increase that penetration. So how much deeper does skin contact really get? I think it's important to remember how light is being absorbed exponentially as it passes through the tissue. One study discusses how 90% of the light energy from near-infrared laser is absorbed within the first 10 millimeters of biological tissue. And they say most of the power was absorbed within the first two millimeters of the tissue, and there's hardly any power left after 20 millimeters of tissue. This is why just cranking up the intensity with a non-contact panel, most of that light is still going to be superficially absorbed. It's going to oversaturate the skin, and that's why you get mostly heating. So I would say if you can even compress the tissue by a couple millimeters, you've significantly improved your penetration, you've doubled it, you've shifted that whole profile down by a couple millimeters, and that's made a significant improvement in your penetration profile. So the handbook on low level laser therapy, they say you get about four centimeters of penetration, but with firm pressure, you can get five centimeters of penetration. So even that's a 20% increase without having to crank up the intensity. And that's super important. I think if you can just get 20%, if we need to target deeper tissue, we would never give away that 20%. Now, I found only one study that directly measured this, comparing contact mode to non-contact mode at two different distances. And it's really good because it was through living tissue of about 14.38 millimeters of skin and muscle. So they found the contact mode penetrated 0.78% and the non-contact mode at one centimeter away was 0.25%. So that's more than a three times better penetration. But at five centimeters away, and that's only two inches, there was no detected intensity. That means it's infinitely better to use contact method for this penetration depth. And some of their conclusions and discussion is very important. They found there was no difference between 1CM and 5CM for non-contact modes of treatment. They very clearly conclude that for superficial conditions, you can use non-contact, but for deep tissue, you should apply the pressure technique. But I like this emphasis that it doesn't matter if it's 1CM, 5CM, 10CM, non-contact is non-contact. So I see some dosing guidelines. They say, oh, if you're six inches away from the panel, you're getting higher intensity and that's your deep tissue treatment. And then they say, okay, if you're 12 or 24 inches away, you're getting lower intensity and that's more for superficial tissue. And again, that's generally true but it's not the kind of deep penetration that the clinical studies are talking about with the skin contact technique. So it, you know, it doesn't matter if you're six inches away or 24 inches away, it's inherently superficial if you're not getting that skin contact. So back to this handbook on low level laser therapy by Dr. Hamblin, I found this was a very interesting quote. Most devices are designed to be used in contact or held stationary in one position. Now this quote feels very odd in the year 2024 because it seems like most devices on the market are non-contact. So what's going on? Well, they're referring to most of the clinical studies and the clinical grade devices are designed for skin contact. And I think this book has an important timestamp that it was made in 2017. This was around the time when the industry really shifted towards these big non-contact panels that a lot of influencers were promoting and they didn't really talk about the skin contact method because their narratives were more focused on these non-contact panels. And here's another clip of saying that most of the clinical research was done with skin contact. When light hits skin, it reflects off. When light touches skin, more is absorbed. When you push the light into the skin, even more is absorbed. So most research uses what's called a contact technique where the light diodes touch the skin. And once you become aware of the skin contact method, you start to see it in a lot of studies, you see it in the research, and then you know you need to mimic that method to get the best results. So here's just a couple human studies. The LED was applied in direct contact with the skin. 
and another study saying the PBMT were administered in direct contact with the skin and applied with slight pressure. So you'll start to notice not only skin contact, but how much pressure are they making? And in a recent January 2024 article, they used direct contact with the skin with light pressure. And one review article even specifically mentions that whole body red light therapy lacks that contact with the target tissue. And that might be a reason why they're not seeing consistent results with whole body red light therapy. And we've already discussed in a couple previous videos that it's well recognized that these whole body panels are more of a systemic treatment and not a deep targeted treatment. And I think it's a good thing that we don't get the penetration from non-contact light, like sunlight, from panels, from incandescent bulbs, because that would mean if we spent more than 20 minutes outside in the sun, we would get massively overdosed on light therapy. But luckily, our skin is protecting us and making sure that we don't get the penetration from non-contact light, like sunlight. And we know we get even less penetration from the heat of the sunlight, because the heat also creates mechanisms that causes more superficial absorption. So we have these protections in place to make sure non-contact sunlight doesn't overdose us. And that if we want the supplement of sunlight, then non-contact is great. But if you want that more therapeutic, deeper penetration, that's when you use skin contact. So that's all I have on the skin contact method. Hopefully you can start to see what I've been seeing in all this research on the review articles and textbooks and from leading experts, even in videos saying that they prefer skin contact to get the deepest penetration, to get most consistent clinical grade response. And hopefully this industry can move in the right direction. And so we're not getting laughed at by leading researchers. Thanks for tuning in.